Hello everyone, this is Sharmin Khan from Milky Way Art Design. So today I am going to work on a triptych and the canvas sizes that I have, they are kind of unusual. Mm, these are 8 inch by 19 inch uh, canvases. A while ago, I'm not sure uh, if you will remember, on a Facebook group I posted this picture or painting and it was an experiment i was working on and i loved it loved it loved it but then again new things came into my mind that i can try something different you know what happens new things takes over you and you forget about the things that you really want to try so eventually that this piece got sold so i think okay i really need to go for this one Unfortunately, today's video is going to be a long one because it has many steps. One layer needs to dry before I can pour on the next layer. So please hang in there and I'll show you the entire process. So first canvas that I have, I am going to base coat it and it's going to be white and light green um couple of things i am using house paint and i'm going to do dutch pour right now so i'm going to use house paint to do my dutch pour i think and i diluted it a lot i added bunch of water so my things my uh, colors can run easily the other side i have this beautiful green this green oh oh i have these colors i kind of mixed all my house paints that i have at home I just kind of mixed some of these some of that and I got this beautiful color so it doesn't have a name right so the colors that i'm using no matter how much dilute you do the house paint tends to dry faster so i have to go fast first one is deco art americana 24k gold next one is purple a little bit of snap snapdragon is mixed into that next one is deco art copper and the last one is emerald from tlp Let's start.
so as you can see i'm not very good at um dutch pour so i try to probably overcompensate with other techniques so i am going to stop here hope it will not crack because i'm worried about too much paint but i have a uh, added crack 800 So this is the problem I ran into with house paints. You can see that I have some cracks here, breaking up basically, it's not crack, they're breaking up. And that's okay because that's where my blooms are going to come. So the idea of this is it's all about composition. I am creating a certain amount of chaos in the center. And then I'm going to come back and I will put some uh, structured, very organized pieces to balance the chaosness in the center. So that's what uh, where I am going for. Uh, we will see how it turns out and the, whatever I'm seeing, all these are all in my head. We will see how it turns out, okay? I followed the same method for the other two canvases and here are all three together. So now we are on our next step of this piece. Um, as you can see, it's all dried. Now I am going to do my bloom technique on the dry canvas. Don't worry, I have done it before and it turned really pretty. So I am quite confident that it's going to turn out good, but again, you never know, right? So what I'm doing, I put generous amount of paint on the surface, on the center, and I use the darker shade and make an outer ring okay and after that i put a dot of gold cuz that makes it look rich and at the end goes my cell activator speaking of cell activator i'm using my u.s cell activator recipe because i think i get or whenever i'm doing flower i choose to do that because i think i get better depth now i'm going to blow with the straw to the opposite side. I'm going to use the back side of the stick to pull down some of the paint to show the difference between the two petals of the flower.
since I'm working on this on dry canvas, I'm calling it dry bloom. So this is one of my flower. I would probably do another one here and the other one here. And I will let them dry after that. I hope you get the idea what I'm doing. Quite generous amount. By the way, the color that I used on that one is called cham chamboard or cramboard. I don't know. It's no, not that one. Sorry. The color that I used is flamingo feather. This is Flamingo Feather and this one is Red Tamale. Sorry, this is Hot Tamale. So Flamingo fle Feather and Hot Tamale. I think this Hot Tamale is going to be my new best friend because I am really loving this. The color that I'm getting is... Every once in a while you get some colors like you really love. I think this is one of my new love. As you can see, it's kind of like a quarter um, size circle on my canvas with pretty thick coat of acrylic paint. And then I put some white and then I put some cell activator using the US cell activator recipe. The reason I love the, cell, the US cell activator recipe, it gives me this center which kind of gives me the definition of the flower. That's why I like it. There we go. Let's do another one here. And then I will let it dry.
again the difference i'm showing you the u.s floatrol still lets me have this black center in the middle which australian floatrol will engulf that black black spot So these are my three flowers. Now let's see what we can do. Now let's do another one here. This time, my hot tamale is going to be in the center. And the flamingo feather is going to surround the hot tamale this time. It should give us a different variation of the flower and it should create some uh, difference of or shades to give it some more depth. So we'll see if I really get that. There are some ideas that it goes in your mind and you're thinking, hey, it's going to work. But in reality, it doesn't end up being worked out. So we'll see. Let's see. I'm going to blow the first one on this side. That's the first leaf. I think I should have waited for this to dry. I don't know. Well, I was hoping that I am going to get more um, difference of the shades, which I didn't. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop now and I will let this, let this dry and I will do the next layer on top of the dried flowers. And here again, this is my bloom, which are dried. So now let's work on my next piece. Again, this is dry bloom and I will start maybe a flower here and go this way. Maybe we'll see. So first one, the pigment that I'm using, it's called Luna, really shimmery. And then let's use a tiny bit of it's called willow blue but i don't see anything about anything blue about this one it's really pretty actually 
Now this one is purplicious. So again, this one is called purplicious. So I am going to border. Oops. So that I dripped there a little. That means I have to make something over there because otherwise it will be a mess. Oh no, it's gone. Wow. It's gone. I'm impressed. And then a tiny bit of pink orchid. These are all new, beautiful, beautiful colors. I'm in love. Like, I'm really happy with the colors that I got in this shipment. By the way, these are all color art pigments. Again, if you want to buy these pigments, you can get... You can use my code, which is in my description section, where you will get 20% off. See again the US flow troll recipe give me this nice black center. That's what I am looking for. Next flower probably here because this area is ugly so I, I'm going to cover that up. So basically once your once your um dutch pot dries the places that you see that it's ugly you don't like it you just put dry blooms there that's the idea so if you are not expert on dutch pour like me this is a good alternative Forgot to put the gold and cell activator on top.
Let's make another one. Let's do one here because I don't think nothing much is going. It's like too much is going on here. So I'm going to cover that up. It's not nothing much. It's too much. For some reason, I have this over here. So let's see what I can do with this one. Or maybe I can use a stick to This bottle went, got bigger somehow. I did not pay attention how, but it happened. So I hope these ones dries well after I do this. okay I'm gonna wipe this area I'm gonna pause myself. now on this purple one I love this area so I'm not going to do anything over there um, maybe I'll keep it but definitely I'll do a flower here and see let's take it from there I'm going to again use Luna for this one center because it's such pretty and vibrant. I like it. And therefore, on the outer skirt, I'm going to use this very bright magenta color. What color it is mixed together i don't remember exactly because it was my um previously mixed color and i have a bad habit of not writing down everything
that's the first flower really nice Where should I put my next one? Let's do one here and I'll do another one here because it's uh, I don't like it. One thing is interesting I noticed that the Luna is which is a pigment is covering the acrylic paint because the dark magenta that you see that's acrylic but it did not cover the other pigments which is really interesting i just noticed it what does it mean i don't know just shared because i noticed something If you are trying this, one thing I want to share is like, if there is too thick of a paint, don't worry, it's going to dry thick, it's not going to crack anything. What's there to crack? Because all the other uh, paints underneath that the base coat is already dried, right? Just to keep in mind. So even though, see, it's so thick here, I don't care because you are not going to crack anything. You don't have enough power to crack the dry paints next one I'm gonna do here And it's a straight boba straw, if you're wondering in case.
So now <clears throat> that I'm done, I'm going to let everything to dry. Then we'll come and revisit this again. Now you can see that this layer is dried. I'm going to put another layer of flowers and this time my color is going to be lighter. So what I'm thinking, probably I'll make, say, one flower here. The other one here. Let's make this one first. I was actually thinking putting this one in the center. My cell activator. Now, blow. Or maybe use the thicker one. Uh, I'm not really happy with this one. Let's see if I can use my finger to spread it out a little. I'll let it dry and I'll see what can I do after it dried completely. Let's put maybe one flower here. I feel like this one is too thin, so I'm going to add a tiny bit of triple thick polyurethane. thing. Let's try this one.
now let's move on to the next one and probably i will cut one or two of the flowers because the video is going to be too long I like it. Let me show you the composition. There we go. Let it dry. So this is how it looks after they dried. As you can see, the composition looks really pretty. And I also added some leaves and vines to add some interest. I just embellished them like after the fact. So this is what it looks like. And the beauty of this would be uh, when you resin them, it will look like three dimensional. All the layers will pop up. Let me show you an example. So this was my first try and I resined it. As I hope you can see that the um, Dutch pour is here. Then I layered the flowers on top of the each, each one. And you can see. And always when you try to do these things, my suggestion would be put the darker color underneath. Then the lighter colors on top. This is my first piece and this is the triptych is my second piece. So if I practice more, I will get better at the color choices, I hope. And these are uh, the flowers that I did. These are all pigments. So I am really happy with the result. And I will show you after I resin this triptych and I'll show you how it turns out, okay? So my suggestion would be, this would be a very good technique if you are one trying to get some depth, like um, different layers of uh, when you resin them, uh, that this can be a good um, alternative. Also, suppose you messed up one of your painting and uh, instead of just redoing the whole thing, you can embellish them with flowers and call it a day. It'll look nice and pretty. No one will even know. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. I'm sorry it's a little longer video, but there are so many little things that I talk, talk you through. So I felt like we needed this. Um, so thank you so much for joining me today. Until next time. Bye.